So what I'll do is I'll get started. Um, so I'll work in a kind of small area just because this is more about technique rather than the final product. But what I tend to do is um, keep the jar of Vaseline open and kind of, you know, within reach. Um, so I can, you know, constantly sort of dip my fingers in there if um, the wax starts to get a, um, too sticky to work with as well. Um, depending on what you do, if you need this to be sort of um, a little bit more flexible on the skin or if you want to wear it around for a little bit longer, I know wax is not the most durable thing to kind of wear to a party, for example. Um, but if you wanted to make it a little bit more durable, you can actually stick it down with um, Prozade or um, my newfound love now, which is um, oops, Talos's 5 silicon adhesive. So either of these products, um, the major difference between them, I mean, I personally, I find Talos's 5 um, a hell of a lot better to clean up at the end. It's a lot easier to clean up. Um, it just remains a lot more tacky than um, Prozade does as well. Um, the unfortunate thing is this guy here is $120 a bottle for about this size. And then the same size again here, um, this product, uh, product, sorry, Prozade is about $10, might even be less than that. So that's the sort of major difference between the two. Um, this is a real pain to kind of clean up, even though they say there are cleaners specifically for it. Um, I, yeah, I have a lot of problems cleaning it up. Um, sorry, I should have introduced this product at the start, but um, what I will do is I'll put a layer of this down just to kind of, you know, give you an example of um, how I might use it um, in conjunction with Scarlax. So um, what I tend to do is just get a cotton bud or a Q-tip and um, dip that in the end and then just sort of apply a really kind of thin layer of it over my skin and this just helps the wax uh, stick a little bit better. And so you just wait for that to get clear. This is actually drying really quickly because this room that I'm in currently is quite hot. Um, let that dry um, and what you want to do is just take a ball of the nose and scar wax and sort of you can squish it in your hand to start with or you can sort of press it out on your skin but what I tend to do is start off using my fingers if you find the wax is sticking to your fingers too quickly um, just grab your finger and dip it again into the Vaseline and then I'll help it from um, or help it stop sticking so I tend to kind of just use my fingers to kind of smooth out that ball. Um, you can drag out the edges like this and try and smooth it with your fingers. Um, I find most of the work now I can do just using my fingers and then I'll go back in with tools at the kind of last minute and help smooth it out a little bit more. But um, if you keep dipping your finger in wax, I mean, sorry, in Vaseline, and go back over the surface again, you tend to be able to get it pretty smooth pretty quickly. So that's not looking too bad at the moment. Obviously you can see the color difference. Sorry about the shine in the light. So from here I tend to um, take this spatula here and another trick I've sort of um, learned, I don't know if I've seen this in other videos before, but um, you can actually coat the tools that you use to help stop wax from sticking as well. So what I tend to do is sort of just use the kind of rounded tip of this tool here and go back over just really lightly and kind of help flatten that wax out again. Um, if you want to, you can kind of focus on scraping some of the wax on the edges of the um, piece that you've just put down. You can, if you want to, um, grab this tool and dip it straight into wax as well. Um, it's kind of up to you. Um, one thing I have noticed, however, there are sort of pros and cons to this technique. One is if you use a lot of Vaseline, um, which I think I just called wax, sorry about that. Um, if you use a lot of Vaseline over the top of the wax, you'll find it getting kind of mushy um, pretty quickly. Um, so try and kind of use it sparsely if you can. So what I'm doing here is just almost, you know, kind of like spreading margarine or butter on a piece of toast, I suppose, is go over this really, really lightly. Um, and then go back in with my fingers again and sort of smooth it out. So 
looks like. That's getting pretty close now. So you can obviously see the difference in colour between the wax and my palm. Um, from this angle here, um, it's a little less obvious, but what I'm really looking for here, I suppose, is just the fact that the edges of um, I blended the edges out nicely to my actual skin. The colouring at this point is not particularly important. Um, sorry, the other thing I forgot to mention too was um, just these stipple sponges. I've got a couple of them in um, different textures. So this is a sort of finer textured stipple sponge. You can get them in you know much coarser textures as well. Um, I tend to use this finer sponge just to go back over and kind of clean up um, the excess Vaseline around the outside because you'll notice it becomes quite shiny the more Vaseline you use on your hand obviously so um, and the other thing you can do is um, just lightly dab back over the waxed area that you've um, created and what this does is it removes the shine but it also helps uh, when you're ready for painting it helps the, the uh, Skin Illustrator colours um, adhere a little bit better so let's go back over that lightly Most of the shine's gone in that now. You can see that there. See that? There we go. So from here, you could either go in, um, depending on how much time you want to spend, and pretty much make the cut or the incision straight away, or if you wanted to go back in and create a little bit more detail, you can go in with. Um, a pointer tool or something similar to this. Um, I think in Stuart Bray's video he uses a pops popsicle stick or a, a, an icy pulse stick as we call it here. Um, you can go back in and sort of just lightly drag over the top of the wax that you've just applied um, and you know look at the actual directions of the folds and lines in your skin and try and follow those again. The point of this is obviously to just you know make it make the wax part look as real as possible so um, you can kind of be a bit creative with this as well you don't have to follow the lines exactly obviously you've just covered a pretty um, significant area so you can't see what's underneath that so I just go back in and you know, lightly sort of draw some of the folds and creases back in that I've taken away with the wax um, they all look pretty harsh at this stage so I go back in with um, a brush and you can sort of use it as it is at the moment so um, just go back over those lines really gently kind of brushing over the top of them or if you want to you can sort of dip the tip of it in a bit of Vaseline again and you know work over those lines and kind of smooth them out a little bit more um, you can spend a lot of time on this or not very much time on it at all really um, most of this will get covered up anyway once you apply the paint or the skin illustrator as well as the blood as well so um, don't obsess over the details too much unless you want to so from here I get this tool again um, and use the fine pointed end and go in and actually start sort of creating the indentation so there's I mean you know you can do different things I could just cut a straight line through this I could make it a graze I could pretty much do anything really um, what I tend to do is like I, I like to keep the cuts kind of slightly random so I kind of um, press the the tip of the tool into the wax and kind of rock it gently um, and this sort of you know creates a little bit more of a tear and kind of um, somewhat like fatty texture under the skin as well. Um, I don't know if you can see that. And generally depending on how this is created, uh, for most cuts they kind of taper off to a finer point at the end so I get you know the same tool or you could go back in and get this fine point needle tool and just sort of um, continue that line out gradually at each end um, so I mean this is just a matter of personal choice really like you know what are you trying to achieve 
I'm just going for a really basic cut because this is more about the way I use wax, obviously. So um, this seems to be kind of moving quite nicely too because I put a layer of glue down or prose down. So um, I might just leave it like that for now. I could go back in with brushes and sort of remove some of those harsher edges in there and, you know, um, you know, work on the kind of fatty, meaty texture a little bit more or just leave it as it is. Um, if you've got any sort of stray bits of wax sticking up, now is probably the best time to go in and remove all of those as well. I've got one up here. That's kind of it. So the next step is to colour the wax. So I just use um, the Flesh Tone Skin Illustrator palette. What I tend to do um, when I use these is I put a little bit of alcohol in the actual well for the colour that I'm using and then I'll put a sort of slightly larger quantity out here. The reason for that is, um, you know, I'm, I'm generally using one hand so it's kind of hard to keep opening the bottle of alcohol and pouring it back into the palette. So um, I just go through and grab a little bit of each colour and I mean this is sort of a bit of a guessing game until you start actually applying it to your skin so um, I tend to go in and take a little bit of color I might add a little bit of the red I've got some in the lid already so um, or the rose adjuster I should say um, and put some of that down first mainly because I'm working on my palm like I said before there are kind of um, there's more red in this side of the hand than there is the outside of the hand so um, and what I'll do is, I don't know if you can see that, but what I'm doing is sort of picking up that colour and flicking it back over the top of the wax. So depending on how much Vaseline you've used, you might you may find the paint kind of run straight off the wax or you might see it kind of adhere. Um, what I might do is go back in just with this sponge lightly and re-dab back over so create a little bit of texture for the paint to stick again. This also helps sort of fan out the paint that you've just put down as well. Um, so that's just a light wash. So again, I'd probably go over this with something slightly more concentrated and by that I mean more color and less alcohol. So rather than sort of, um, you know, put more alcohol down, I'll just focus on using what I've got um, in the lid here. And then again, flick back over the top. And it doesn't matter if you sort of go over your skin at this stage as well. That's actually working a little bit better now. Um, in fact, it's probably easier. It sort of helps hide the edges if a bit of the paint actually ends up on your real skin as well as the wax. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully I can do it without looking too shiny. Um, all I've really done here is put sort of um, the rose adjuster down on top of that scar wax, but that's already kind of looking like it's, you know, part of my skin or, sorry. So what I'll probably do now is um, leave that as it is and then maybe just go back in with a little bit of the skin tone, not too much, because I don't want to spoil it. Um, and just lightly go back over the top of everything again. And like I said before, you'll most likely kind of cover this area um, with blood anyway. So um, I don't know if you can see that. It seems to be showing up okay. So that's, I mean, that's relatively close to my actual skin color on my palm here. So you can see sort of some of the harsher lines I drew back in with the wax but I mean unless you're really really looking at it up closely you kind of can't tell anyway. Um, if I was going to do this later on I would probably spend a bit more time getting some of those details um, a little bit nicer and kind of smoothing them out a bit more. So from here I mean if you wanted to you could put blood straight into this um, and it would kind of pull up inside the cut anyway but what I tend to do is um, 
first of all to sort of mimic um, the cut flesh because obviously the, the you know more skin layers you cut through the pinker um, skin becomes so if you notice whenever you get a blister generally um, the layers of skin underneath that blister are kind of a pinky reddish color um, so what I like to do is go back in with this um, rose adjuster here and actually paint some of that kind of pinkish tone back in um, to the inside of the wound as well just to kind of mimic the layers of skin underneath so I won't go too heavy with this but um, it's all right to actually load up the brush at this stage too with um, quite a bit of alcohol because you can always sort of dab this out again if you want to um, just go back over that with my fingers so what you want it to look like is sort of um, you know slightly irritated as well if you can see that there it looks quite pink on camera um, it's not too bad here this is more for the sort of um, just the inside edges of the cut and then after that I go back in with the effects palette um, predominantly the two blood tones again and paint some of the um, the inside of the wound these blood tones um, they save you from having to use too much blood at the end actual real blood once you put it on I shouldn't say real blood I should say fake blood um, and they also create a bit of depth as well so um, if you sort of concentrate these colors more on the inside of the wound rather than the outside edges so I'm just using a bit of the aged blood here. If you wanted to, you could go back in and um, mix a bit of this um, red up with black as well, and that would create the illusion that the cut's even deeper again. I don't know if you can see that there. So I might just add a little bit of black to that too. And then apply that to the very, very middle of the wound. A little bit too much and this will just give the illusion that it's um, much deeper so again you don't have to be overly detailed with this part either because once you sort of apply the blood um, most of this paintwork will get covered up anyway so this just sort of helps it visually look a bit deeper underneath the blood once you've applied it so that's it there and you can see that um, there's a little bit of that stipple texture in the wax still remaining but I mean I would much prefer that than having a kind of completely smooth waxed area um, with obviously you know a kind of quite a shiny part of my hand I think that would look probably more fake than this but um, that's you know that's not too bad as far as the color matching goes so the final part now really is just applying the blood. So what I tend to do is um, pre-mix. So I put in a couple of drops of blood here. Just not too much. Um, and then a couple of drops of dishwashing detergent. Usually just two of those. And I like to get when I'm applying blood, I like to get a brush that's um, quite long with loose bristles. I think um, applying blood kind of loosely and dabbing it back over with tissues and whatnot is probably a better process than getting a fine pointed brush and painting it straight into the wound. So I'll just mix that around. And I mean, first of all, you could start by putting a little bit in there and kind of looking at it and you know is it a fresh cut did it just happen has you know there been a chance for the blood to run out of the wound yet maybe not maybe you want to kind of keep it like this so it looks like it's literally just happened maybe you want to get kind of a bit messier and you know add a little bit more to the edges um, and don't worry about this looking kind of too concentrated you can go back with tissues and mop a lot of this stuff up 
I tend to kind of start heavy and then go back and um, wipe up any excess that I don't want there anymore. So, um, so a good idea to um, also is to keep a packet of wet wipes pretty handy. Um, I find these really, really handy. Actually, I, I go through packets of them pretty quickly. So. Um, you can use them as they are just to go in and sort of dab up some of the blood or excess blood if you don't you know if you don't want it to look too heavy on the wound you can go back in and wet this particular wet wipe even more and then dab back over it again if you want to um, to help lift even more blood up so what I've done is gone in and sort of tapped back and and remove pretty much all that blood from the outside so I kind of like what's happening on the inside of the wound now like a lot of the blood's fallen right into the middle there's still some of that kind of pinky meaty flesh that I painted in um, still visible on the sides now so what I might do is you know make it look like um, blood is just starting to drip out so you can hold your hand up I'll put this back in view in a second um, so you could add a couple of drips like that, make some more areas of it look a little bit more messy. So I mean, this is really kind of up to you. Um, have a think about you know how long the cut um, may have occurred ago. That actually even makes sense. But um, yeah, think about how long ago it happened. You know, would your hand be covered in a lot of blood? Would it just be a little bit of blood? Um, you know you can actually experiment a little bit more you can put some stuff on here you can just stick some you know random blobs of blood like this on top and then actually hold it not too hard with your other hand you know imagine you've just cut yourself for real and you want to stop the blood flow so you put one hand down on top and try and stop it like this or you have been pain wincing um, and then take your hand away and kind of have a look at that and you know is that something you're happy with or is there still too much you know blood kind of floating around but really this is sort of a personal choice thing now um, so what I wanted to do really is to show you the wax technique so but I'm pretty happy with that I mean it's not my best work ever but again this is more about um, applying and coloring wax so I might put a couple more drops in on this side Um, don't be scared to use your hands either. Um, some of the best tools you can have when you're doing special effects. So I'm pretty happy with that now. Whoops. There we go. So that's it. That's my technique for applying scar wax and colouring. Um, blood's obviously a personal thing. And there you go. Thanks for watching.